You're watching Tag TV. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 31st of January. Indian President addresses Parliament as budget session begins. Several injured as protesting students thrashed by police in Pakistan administered Kashmir. An Afghan president accuses Pakistan of holding keys to war. And now for all the details. The budget session of the Indian parliament was kicked off by President Ramnath Kovind on Thursday. The interim budget, which will be presented on Friday, will be Prime Minister Modi-led government's last before the general elections this year. It is expected to be loaded with big announcements including relief to the middle class taxpayers and populist measures on farmers income. Healthcare is the government's topmost priority and the benefits of government schemes are reaching poorest of the poor. Indian President Ramnath Kovind said on Thursday ahead of the presentation of the interim budget. While addressing lawmakers of both the upper and the lower houses of the Indian Parliament on the first day of the budget session in New Delhi, Kovind highlighted the steps taken for women, farmers and the middle class over the past year. Presenting a virtual report card of the Prime Minister Narendra Modi-led government's tenure, Kovind highlighted its various development works and commitment to social justice as he asserted it has worked to build a new India after assuming power in 2014. विश्व की सबसे बड़ी स्वास्थ्य योजना प्रधानमंत्री जन आरोग्य अभियान के तहत देश के 50 करोड़ गरीबों के लिए गंभीर बीमारी की स्थिति में हर परिवार पर प्रतिवर्ष 5 लाख रुपए तक के इलाज खर्च की व्यवस्था की गई सिर्फ चार महीने में ही इस योजना के तहत 10 लाख से ज्यादा गरीब अस्पताल में अपना इलाज करवा चुके हैं the interim budget, which will be presented by Indian Finance Minister Piyush Goel on February 1st, will be the Modi government's last before the general elections this year. It is being expected it will be loaded with big announcements, providing some relief to the middle class taxpayers. Some populist measures on farmers' income are also widely expected. At least three civilians and two security personnel were injured on Thursday in a grenade attack in Anantanag district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province. The attack comes the day after a similar grenade attack injured three civilians in Kulgam district of the province. At least three civilians and two personnel of India's paramilitary Central Reserve Police Force were injured on Thursday in a grenade attack by a terrorist in Anant Nag district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province. The terrorist hurled a grenade near Sherbag police station in Anant Nag, causing injuries to the civilians and the security personnel. The injured were immediately shifted to a civil hospital in the district and their condition was stable till the last reports came in. The incident comes a day after a similar attack by terrorists injured three civilians in Kulgam district of the province. India accuses neighboring Pakistan of regularly arming and infiltrating terrorists across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Pakistan, however, denies the allegations. Moving on, Several students were severely injured in Muzaffarabad city of Pakistan administered Kashmir after police resorted to baton charge and used tear gas shells to disperse them as they were holding a protest to demand parking spaces. Residents in the illegally occupied region have long blamed that they are being subjected to brute force for demanding even their basic rights and for voicing their concerns.
Several students were severely injured on Wednesday when police baton charged and used tear gas shells to disperse them for holding a protest in Muzaffarabad city of illegally occupied Pakistan administered Kashmir. The university students were staging a demonstration over the non provision of parking spaces in Muzaffarabad. The protest led to blocked roads, which further resulted in traffic jams. When the protesters denied clearing the area, police resorted to the use of force to disperse them. The police fired tear gas shells on the protesting students who were forced to retreat to the university premises. Later, the students shouted slogans against the police and called them terrorists. Locals blame the illegally occupied region continues to suffer a stepmotherly treatment and remains backward due to negligence by Islamabad to develop infrastructure. People demanding even basic rights are more than often subjected to inhuman treatment and their voices are muzzled with brute force. In news from Afghanistan, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani on Wednesday said, Keys to war are in Pakistan at the neighboring countries a safe haven for cross-border militant activities. Afghanistan has long blamed Pakistan of turning a blind eye to Afghan Taliban commanders on its soil and of supporting the militant group it is fighting. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani on Wednesday said the keys to war are in Islamabad, Quetta, Rawalpindi, all the cities in Pakistan, suggesting the neighboring country was a safe haven for cross-border militant activities. The leader of the war-torn nation made the remarks while addressing a gathering of more than 2,000 youths from 300 districts, where they discussed peace and the role of youths in this process. Afghanistan has previously accused Pakistan of turning a blind eye to Afghan Taliban commanders on its soil and even of supporting the militant group it is fighting, which Islamabad denies. The Afghan president's comments came as talks between Taliban and US officials on ending the 17-year-long war in Afghanistan appears to be gaining momentum. Ghani has also cautioned the religious legitimacy of the Taliban, which has repeatedly refused to hold direct peace talks with the Afghan government. More news from Afghanistan. A senior official of Afghanistan's Independent Election Commission has raised concern over not receiving election funds yet from the government or donor organizations for the upcoming presidential polls. According to the poll body, the election will need an estimated $70 million. A member of the Independent Election Commission or IEC in Afghanistan, Sayed Hafizullah Hashemi, has said donor organizations and government have not yet said how much they will provide in funding for the upcoming presidential elections scheduled for July 20th this year. However, in turn, the poll body which has approved their budget have not handed this over to either government or donors. According to the Commission, the elections will need an estimated $70 million. Uh, According to the election law in Afghanistan, the budget should be approved before the IEC announces the date for elections. At least 18 candidates, including incumbent President Ashraf Ghani, are running for the top post in the 2019 presidential elections. A wide variety of flowers and potted saplings were on display in flower shows organized recently in India's southern Bengaluru and western Pune city. The exhibitions were a major attraction for scores of nature enthusiasts who visited them to see multi-hued flowers. A flower show was recently organized in Pune city of India's western Maharashtra province in which different varieties of flowers and potted saplings were exhibited for the visitors. 
Nature enthusiasts from across the province throng the annual flower exhibition to witness the craft displayed by the artist in different designs with multi-hued flowers. The flower show was aimed at creating awareness among the visitors about the conservation of environment and the benefits of planting trees in their surroundings. यहाँ का जो फ्लावर्स उसके अट्रैक्शन उसके कलर्स और उसका जो ब्यूटी है वो हमें यहाँ खींच लाता है A similar flower show was also organized in India's southern Bengaluru city that enthralled the visitors, especially school children, with its unique collection of exquisite flowers. The flower show held at popular Lal Bagh Garden was dedicated to India's iconic freedom fighter Mahatma Gandhi. The flowers are beautiful, very very beautiful. I mean, like the the house, the structures, they're stunning. India is a small player in the 40 billion dollar global cut flower industry dominated by Holland, France, Italy, South Africa and Thailand. Its annual flower production is about 1000 tons. A 10 day long folk songs and dance workshop was recently organized in India's Himalayan region of Ladakh to teach different traditional art forms of the region to the youngsters. The event aimed at creating awareness about the rich culture of the region besides providing a platform to the budding artists. With an objective of reviving the age-old cultural and traditional art forms in India's Himalayan Ladakh region, a 10-day long folk songs and dance workshop was recently organized in remote Igu village of Leh district. Scores of youths hailing from inaccessible parts of the region participated in the workshop to learn folk music, dance and mastering the techniques of Ladakh's traditional sport, archery. The workshop was aimed at creating awareness among the people about the rich culture of the region besides providing a platform to the budding artists to learn from the best in the business. Uh us Igu gaon mein bachchon ke darmiyan jo humne 10 din ka ek workshop kiya wo workshop especially humne focus kiya tha Ladakhi folk song pe kyunki aaj ke daur mein folk song jo hai folk dance se in pe zara tawajjuh kam di ja rahi hai to humne socha ki bachchon ko kyunki bacche hamare aane wale kal hai to bachchon ke darmiyan ye humne फुटवेयर Scores of people gather every day to see the holy man sitting on the throne with fire burning under it. The ongoing world's largest religious gathering, the Kumbh Fair in India's Northern Prayagraj city, has been an attraction for visitors as it offers many curious cases of strictly disciplined prayers by Hindu seers. One such attraction has been a Hindu holy man Visheshanand Maharaj who has been sitting on a throne made of iron nails and wearing iron footwear to perform tapasya a spiritual practice that involves deep meditation Scores of tourists and visitors make a beeline every day to see the Hindu seer sitting on the throne adorned with several ancient style weapons with fire burning beneath it Ye pura singhasan yant tant mantra se saja hua hai ji जैसी प्रकाष्ठा होगी हर शस्त्र में वह ताकत है ये खाली अस्त्र शस्त्र नहीं है ये अनुसंधान किए हुए अस्त्र शस्त्र है This kind of unique attractions are a common feature of the Kumbh Fair which is more than 2000 years old and is held every 3 years in one of four cities of Prayagraj, Haridwar, Ujjain and Nashik. The fair is a meeting point for Hindu seers some of whom live in forests or Himalayan caves and come out only during this period. Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.